blessing for me to be here today. I'm sort of like Minnie Pearl. Uh, was Chris Beebe's friend of the Grand Hole Opry. They introduced Minnie Pearl at a meeting and she, said, she was saying, I'm just as proud to be here. I had to say, I'm just as proud to be here. And thank you for your interest in me, our work, and the Lord's work in this area. Anyway, they say, if something walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. Well, what are we after here? What are we trying to do? What is before us? For me and you, what, what did God put us here for, really? To find an answer from the Bible standpoint, we look at the Bible. Acts 16, and then 15, there are some things that happen that indicate the work of God. Now, in both of these places, in Acts 16 and in Philippians 2, reverence is made to a church. Now, wherever God does the work, wherever he did, and we're following him, it's through church work, church building. And we don't have to use that in a sense of an apology for our planning of churches. Church planning is on the mind of God. And if you're involved in a church planning church or a church that has an interest in church planning, then you are involved in the work of God to that extent. And maybe you never go to the field. Maybe you don't know too much about the world. But what you do know and what you can learn can be used of God to build his work all around the world. And many times in the work of God, God's church makes the best progress during times of adversity. We don't like that. And, uh, it goes against human nature. But, but it, it works. For instance, after World War II, the modern day leadership, the greatest push for missions came after World War II. Our soldier boys came back from the new world. Many of them went back as missionaries. Oh, that's fun. Cowboy from Western Nebraska ended up dying on the Philippines. He was in the Baton March. He'd been to the whole land in the Philippines. He came home. He went back to minister to these people and built churches. And God used many men that were in the service to do the work of God. So all of us have a part in this. Thank God for that privilege. Thank God for the opportunity of serving the Lord. And Acts 16 says, <coughs> <coughs> Paul and Silas were looking, looking for a place to go. They, they were praying about where they should go. And a vision appeared to Paul. Acts 16 to 20 and following with illustrious. And as they were praying and thinking about it, a man appeared in a vision on in Macedonia, which is in Greece, across the Aegean Sea, and said, Come over and help us. And so they went over and helped him. My friend, many people of the world are calling, come over and help us. We, we need the gospel. And Paul then leaves where they are, and they end up in Philippi. Well, it seems as though they made a big, big, big mistake. Because there's Paul and Silas are thrown in prison and set there to rot. And and beaten because they're serving the Lord. My friend, anywhere the gospel goes forth, somebody has to pay a price. It can be in loss of position, it can be problems, it can be difficulties involved in the work. And many times, Christians, preachers, missionaries, all have a tendency to, when they're going against stuff, they quit. I know there was a pastor down here in Springville years ago. He said, Wally, well, I was in Springville. I think he said, <coughs> he was there nine years. He took a church in the Midwest. He quit that work. And he said, Wally, in the nine years I was here, I think he said, 15 men came to start churches. All of them are gone now. They've all left and not built, built a church.
Thank you. Uh, uh, so, in mission work, you're going to pay a price. There you will know, be discouragements and disappointments. But eventually, in Philippi, there, in verse 1 of chapter 4, he talks to the two of the deacons there in that church. And in chapter 4, verse 12, around that area somewhere, he talks about this missionary offering this church has given. So in Acts 16, he had a church started in Philippi. In Acts Philippians 2, he had a church helping missionaries and using its influence all around the world. That sounded like a duck. My friend, wherever God does the work, that's exactly what he does. As a pattern for us, as an example for us to follow. Wherever he, wherever he, uh, churches are built, people are taught and, and instructed in the things of the Lord, and then they go from there and around the world. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, Paul talks about the gospel coming into them, then he talks about the gospel working with them, and then the gospel going out from them. That's normal new Christianity. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a duck. My friend, this church ought to be a, a church that represents a duck. God's gospel. And whatever your position in life, whatever you do, I have a responsibility, you have a responsibility to take the gospel to the world. Now, one local church, one local person can I take on every country in the world? Can I go to every place? But they can do what they need to do. They can do what they ought to do. And all we do is say, Lord, here's my life. How can I best be used for you? What, what do you want me to do? Now then, I mean, we don't change our occupation at all. It just means we let the God, God have it, let him run it. I know, I was in Wyoming years ago, old Wynn Twiller, the banker, said, Lord, boy, pray for me that I'll handle the money God has given me in a proper way. I want to honor God, and he did. But he said, I want to honor it in God's way. He had a concern as a Christian businessman that he would do what God wanted him to do. And, he won. and basically, I think he did. So, today, here, thank God for the gospel. I don't know where you heard it, where you got it, but I, I, I stop it. I'm amazed many times. I look at my background. How did I get saved? How, how come I, I came across the gospel? How come I believed? I can't answer all these questions. I know this, the gospel did come in. And the gospel did work. And the gospel did lead. So today, in Grace Baptist Church, they, we didn't have, at one time, we didn't have this building. We didn't have this many people. But we have an opportunity now to go as we've never gone before. To reach people as we've never reached people before. Thank God for victories in the past. Thank God for God calling this person and that person, for God doing this and doing that. But God's not dead yet. God's not done. Until we go to heaven. So, and we look at someone and say, what is that? Is that a quacking like a duck? He says, walking, walking like a duck? It's probably a duck. Okay, this, if the church is following the New Testament, that's a duck. That's real. That's what the, that's what was founded years ago. It's the same thing. We chase our heritage back to the Bible. We're not for the Bible. We wouldn't be here. We're not for the Bible. We wouldn't believe. But because Christ has come and died for our sins, we can believe. And this morning, and we, <coughs> Conclude the service when it ended. My friend, if you never found Christ as your Savior, the gospel is here today for you to receive. You can be saved. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Maybe you're saved, 
But you never thought much about what you should do with your life. Or you haven't looked upon your life as something God wants to use. And today maybe you just realize, Lord, here's my life. Whatever you want is what I want. I want to be, I want to be something genuine and real. I want to have the marks and the friends of Jesus in my life. I want to be what those early Christians were. I want to fit the description of what is called a Christian. I want to live that way. I want to honor God. I want him to have my life. And then thirdly, maybe God is speaking to you about some particular thing in your life. Some particular need that's becoming apparent right now. And God is saying to you, give that to me. Let me have it. And this morning, you've come here and you're looking around for God to have his way in your life. I pray that he will. Yes. Thank you for helping me. I don't know where I'd be with the death of Norma and cancer problem, but praise God for you folks. You have been encouraged to me all along the way. And pray that together we would just keep on going on and serving the Lord, building churches, winning people to Christ, doing what God wants us to do. The whole we're doing here is a duck. Sound like a duck, quack like a duck, it's a duck. What we're doing sounds like a church because it's in the New Testament. What we're doing now <coughs> is nothing but repeating what the New Testament did. Therefore, we, we can know, hey, I'm in the right place. I'm doing the right thing. I'm, right. I'm shooting down the barrel. I'm putting my energy and my interest where it really counts. I'm not fiddling around. I want to be dead, sinner, in God's will. And we can be if we are serving the Lord with the gospel, believing it, practicing it, and giving it to others. That's a real thing. Thank you for having me today. Brother Matthew, are you there?